Wherever you are this morning, please join me in the opening sentences. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Grace and peace to you this morning as we gather for worship. Even though we are gathering in different places and are separated by many miles, I'm glad that you are joining us this morning. There are still many things happening in the life of First Presbyterian Church, though we are unable to gather as a faith community. I wanted to draw a couple of those things to your attention. If I miss anything, you can find those announcements in the bulletin that is online and linked to this video. Morning prayer will continue to happen this week. This is an opportunity on Monday and Wednesday morning to uh, meet as a community over the platform of Zoom, to check in with one another, to pray together, to pray for our community. That will be at 10 o'clock a.m. on Monday morning and Wednesday morning. We hope that you will join Elizabeth or me for that conversation. You can find the link to that Zoom call on Facebook. We will have an event on Facebook. Or you can check our webpage. There will be a, a banner with the Zoom link. We're also trying to send out emails with those links on them, so we hope you'll be able to find it through that medium as well. We're also continuing to do our digital devotional on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 12.15 p.m. Elizabeth and I, or I will be leading those each Tuesday and Thursday. Again, you can find a Facebook event for that. There will also be a banner for, that, for those digital devotionals on our, on our webpage, or you can go to our YouTube channel to find those live streams. Knowing those things and knowing that we do continue to gather as a community using the technology that is available to us, let us prepare our hearts and our minds for worship. Wherever you are this morning, I invite you to stand for the call to worship. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my cry for mercy. I wait for the Lord. My whole being waits. And in God's word I put my hope. Put your hope in the Lord, for with the Lord is unfailing love and full redemption. God will redeem Israel from all their sins. Let us pray. God, our strength and our protector, 
You waken us morning by morning with your gracious word. Help us to stand together against all that threatens your peace and power as you offer your mercy to us and all those weary in the journey of life. Make our feet firm in the shifting sands of these days as we trust fully in you. Amen. Friends, in spite of the many ways that we fall short of God's calling for our lives, we have a God who remains faithful. Though we turn from God, though we often give in to anxiety and fear, though we revert to our instincts for individualism, God is faithful still. So let us confess our sins to God. First in silence, let us pray. Let us also unite our voices confessing together. Merciful God, God we, we confess, confess that, that we have, have not responded, responded to your generosity. generosity. We withhold, we withhold from, from others, others the grace you give us. We, we take for granted the bodies you created from dust. We, we destroy and corrupt the world you formed. We neglect our talents and waste the precious gift of time. We store up in silos the treasures you provide. We forsake valuable relationships and distance ourselves from your people. Forgive us, God, when we fall short of your call. Friends, though we may feel distanced, we are never distanced from God. No matter who we are, no matter where we are, no matter what we have done, we are created, we are forgiven, we are loved by God. Friends, believe the good news. In, In Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ we, we are, are forgiven. forgiven. Amen. If you are standing, you may be seated. If you are already seated, I invite you to find a comfortable position to rest yourself. I'd like to take a moment to talk to any of our children who may be listening today, who may be watching today. I miss you deeply, and I'm sorry that you can't be here with us in worship. I wish that you were here. I wish that we could be together for weekly worship and for youth club, for all the things that we enjoy doing. I know that this is hard, but we're doing the best we can as a community, and I know that you're doing the best you can too. So I wanted to take a moment to talk with you particularly. In a few minutes, I'm going to be reading a piece of scripture in which Jesus talks to the people who are around him, his followers who travel with him, and he talks to them about money. He talks to them about the things that they own, the things that they have received as gifts from God. Now, I say that they receive these things as a gift from God because that is true for everything that we have. All of the money that we have, all of the possessions that we have, our cars, our clothing, our toys, our belongings, these things come to us as gifts from God. They come to us 
as gracious and generous gifts from God. That may feel a little strange to hear because you may have seen your parents spend money on the things that you have, money that belongs to them, but the promise that we have in Scripture is that all good things that we have do come as gifts from God. God has given us the energy to make the money that we do. God has given us the ability to have the things that we have. Now, when Jesus talks to his disciples and his followers about the money that they have and what they should do with it, he uses that as an opportunity to call them to serve God, even with their belongings. He uses that as a way to say, even with your money, even with the things that you have, you can serve God. You can serve God by giving that money to people who are in need of it, maybe even more in need than you. You can use your belongings to share the grace of God by sharing with other people, letting other people use the things that you have. There are many ways that you can use the treasures that you have here on earth to help God's people, which is exactly what God calls us to do. It's exactly what Jesus tells us to do as his followers. So this week, as you um, go about your new normal, as you go about your new and strange routine, I invite you to think about the things that you have, the things that you own, and how you can use them to help others. Let us pray. God, we thank you for the gifts that you have given us. We thank you for the many things we have received from your hand. We ask that you would help us always to think of ways that we can use our money and our treasures to help others. In your most holy name we pray. Amen. Thank you.
Though it is impossible for us to have our choir in this space here with us, it is such a blessing to hear their voices. Truly, I come to realize how much I miss them when they're not here. I'm so thankful for them and for the ability that we have to hear their music in this time. Please join me in the prayer for illumination. Merciful God, your word is our way of truth and life. Create in us hearts that are clean and put your Holy Spirit within us so that we may receive your grace and declare your praise forever. Amen. Our scripture reading for this morning comes from the Gospel of Matthew. This is the sixth chapter, verses 19 through 21. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust consume, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consumes, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Those of you who have at many times in your life turned to Scripture, those of you who have read lots of Scripture over the course of your life, may have heard somewhere along the way that Jesus spends a lot of time talking about money. After the kingdom of heaven, money is the topic which Jesus spends the most words discussing. More of Jesus' words involve money than love, that most sacred concept. Out of 39 parables, 11 involve money or finances. It seems like Jesus is giving us a hint. You know many of these stories. Jesus is challenged about paying taxes. Jesus tells the rich man, go and sell all that you have. Jesus casts out the money changers of the temple. Jesus deals with money a lot. And if Jesus deals with money that much, we should probably spend a little bit of time talking about it too. So, what can we learn about Jesus, given how much he talks about money? What does this say about Jesus? Well, I could say that Jesus is obsessed with money. That seems accurate. But I don't think that quite gets at the truth. It's more that Jesus is really concerned about what we do with money. As you know, during this Lenten season, we have been preaching about how we respond to the gifts we have been given. We've been thinking about how we respond to God's blessings poured out for us. Today we get to the most awkward of those blessings. We talk about the blessing of material wealth, the challenge of what we do with our money. This is a particularly interesting time for us to think about finances. In the midst of a growing pandemic, one of the most prolific stories is about money or the state of the economy. Every day we see stories of a threatened financial situation. Many people are being laid off or fired, losing their source of income. Stock markets are tumbling and rebounding at the drop of a hat. People are weighing the economic costs of shutting down businesses and industries, trying to determine which will cost more money and lives, a sweeping pandemic or a shutdown economy. The effects are very personal and very global. It's an interesting time to be talking about money. But perhaps this is when our conversations about money are the most important. When the resource upon which we depend is threatened or stretched thin, it becomes even more important for us to consider how we use it. 
This passage says much about money with very few words. Jesus begins by describing the volatility of earthly treasures. The proverb-like advice Jesus offers is to avoid storing up earthly treasures. These things can be stolen or can be destroyed by the march of time. Jesus says, therefore, that treasure is better stored in heaven. Jesus uses a different meaning of treasure to convey a deeper message. Where earthly treasure means valuable possessions or money itself, Jesus encourages us to store up treasures of a different kind. The treasures about which Jesus speaks are the treasures of connection. Connection to God, connection to one another. The treasures that cannot be weighed or counted. The treasure of a valued friendship. The treasure of a love shared among family. The treasure of caring for a neighbor or a stranger in a time of need. These connections are the treasures which Jesus lifts up. They connect us to God. For the most important commands we are given is to love God and to love neighbor. By storing up these kinds of treasures, we store up treasures with God. But Jesus does spend some time in this passage talking about earthly treasures and what to do with them. In the final verse, Jesus says, where your treasure is, there will your, will your heart be also. Our earthly treasure, our money, our possessions, even our focus and our time, will go to the things about which we truly care. To me, in my cultural context, that means that you can see what one really cares about by looking at the sorts of things in which one invests. This is one of the main reasons that Claire and I try to be very intentional about how we spend our money. We do this primarily by donating money. We tithe to both of our churches, First Presbyterian and Davidson College Presbyterian. We donate money to organizations that mean a lot to us and organizations that have helped make us the people that we are today. In this way, we try to invest our money in the things we care about. If where our hearts are is revealed by where we spend our money, we try to spend our money on causes that hold special places in our hearts. When we do spend money on ourselves, we try to follow advice that was given to us by a mentor. Ed McLeod is pastor of First Presbyterian Church in Raleigh, North Carolina. He spoke to us about the phrase, you can't buy happiness. Perhaps you've heard this phrase before. Ed disagrees with that phrase. He believes that spent wisely, one can use money to invest in happiness. The way he suggested doing this is interesting and it stuck out to us. He suggested spending money on experiences rather than objects or things. To spend money doing things with people, creating memories rather than accumulating things. Claire and I try our best to do this. When we have an opportunity to spend money on ourselves, we try, to, we try to use money to create moments that we will treasure, moments that will bond us to one another. In this way, I believe, we are creating treasures that are beyond the wealth of earth, treasures that cannot be stolen or worn away by time. In the money that we donate and the money that we spend, we just try to be intentional. There are times when I'm sure we spend money on something we shouldn't. We're certainly not perfect. But I believe that the key is we try to be intentional. We try to put our money where our hearts are. All throughout Lent, members of First Presbyterian Church have been telling me and Elizabeth the stories of their $20 
the $20 that they received here in worship on the first Sunday of Lent, what feels like years ago now. They have been telling us by email, by text, in person or over the phone, what they did with the money we gave them at the beginning of Lent. We did it to try to help us as a community think about God's grace, an unearned gift, a surprising gift, an unexpected gift. It has also become a means by which members of the church have helped those around them. It has been, been a means for members of the church to consider more deeply how their money is spent. Many people have added to the money that they were given with some of their own money. We have received more stories than we could have possibly imagined, and the stories that we have heard have been inspiring. Some folks have gone the tried and true and faithful route. They have given to the agencies we know and love in Stanley County, SCCM, Homes of Hope, Central Elementary School, Butterfly House, organizations that need the help, especially right now. Many folks followed Skeet's lead and contributed to the organization RIP Medical Debt. They have helped relieve thousands of dollars of medical debt in our region. Some people have done a new and different thing. For example, Kim Marshall texted me yesterday and told me how she and Jim spent their $20. In western North Carolina, near Boone, there is a cafe called Farm Cafe. This stands for Feeding All Regardless of Means Farm. It is a place that their children love, and Jim and Kim visited there. Anyone who goes in can get a meal whether they can pay for that meal or not. Those who can pay, pay, and those who can afford to pay more, contribute more to support the meal of another person. Jim and Kim gave their $20 each, and then some, to support farm. They were able to feed about 20 people in the month of March. People have helped out a stranger, they have helped out an individual. People have doubled, tripled, multiplied the money given to them several times over in being generous to those around them. Above and beyond an illustration of God's grace, this $20 challenge has given me a glimpse into where the hearts of the people of First Presbyterian Church dwell. Money is indeed a gift we have been given by God. It is not only the gift that we have been given, but it is an important gift. Several verses after our passage today, Jesus proclaims that we cannot serve two masters. We cannot serve God and wealth. As Christians, as followers of Christ, the master we seek to serve is God. Now, this does not mean that money is evil. It means that money is not a master. Money is a means. Money is a tool by which we serve our true master. Money is used to keep us alive, to keep us healthy, to keep us whole and breathing so that we can be the body of Christ in this world. Money can be used above and beyond that to care for those around us. When we treat money the most faithful way possible, we use it as a means, a means to the end of serving God. We use it as a means for storing up heavenly treasures. We use it as a means for helping those around us. We use it as a means to follow the command of Matthew 25, to feed those who are hungry, give drink to those who thirst, care for the homeless, the sick, and the imprisoned. We use it as a way to serve and love God and neighbor. May we always use our money intentionally. May we invest our money, 
and our lives where our hearts dwell with God and to God's people. In this way, may we share the gifts which we have been given by the grace of God. Amen. Having heard the word read and proclaimed, I invite you, wherever you are, to stand with me and join in the affirmation of faith. In life and in death, we belong to God. Through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit, we trust in the one triune God, the Holy One of Israel, whom alone we worship and serve. Amen. Jesus said, Come to me, all you who are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never thirst. We have gathered at this table so many times before. As a community, we have been nourished for our life together and also our lives apart. In these weeks when we would ordinarily feast at this table together, I encourage you to nourish yourselves with the living, breathing Word of God. I invite you into a table practice that we may all share, even though we are apart. As we eat dinner tonight and in the days ahead, perhaps you may want to light a candle and so be reminded of the light of Christ, the light no darkness can overcome. And as your candle burns during your meal, I urge you to pray for one another for other friends and members of this congregation, 
so that we may be connected in a very specific way as we come to our own tables in the name of Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Everlasting God, in whom we live and move and have our being, you have made us for yourself so that our hearts are restless until they find their rest in you. We praise you for centering us in the life of Jesus Christ, for claiming us in the waters of baptism, and for your guiding presence in every time and place. We join with the saints of every time and place in offering praise and thanksgiving to you for all that is good and right and perfect. We thank you for the faithful witness of your people, especially those who put themselves at risk for the sake of another. We thank you for the love of family and friends, for the ways you connect us to others, and for the life-giving web of relationships that makes us whole. We thank you for signs of goodness in this season, for strangers who applaud health care workers, for the joy of balcony concerts, for free books, for notes from cherished friends, and for the ways we are able to share life digitally. We thank you for the energy to serve you, for the mind through which we know you, and the heart with which we love you. Compassionate God, your love extends to the whole world. Open our eyes to the suffering of your people everywhere. We pray for exhausted and overworked health care providers and ask that you give to them your presence and a sense of their value, particularly in this time. We pray for government officials who are making difficult decisions and ask that you give to them wisdom and courage. We pray for those who are lonely and afraid and ask that you give to them your peace, which passes all understanding. We pray for those who are suddenly unemployed and anxious about the future, and we ask that you give to them a sense of purpose and well-being. And we pray for ourselves. We are easily overwhelmed, especially by that which we cannot control. Remind us daily, hourly, that our times are in your hands, that you are our creator, our redeemer, and always our sustainer. Make us strong in faith and boldly courageous. Hear these prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught his disciples to pray together, saying, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Our God is great, our God is good. Through God's generosity, we have received abundant life and hearts overflowing with love. Our only faithful response is to share. It is to share what we have been given. For many, this has been a week of sharing. Many of you, I know, participated in refilling the shelves at SCCM when they had had such a successful sharing of food in our community. And I know you are using your time to encourage neighbors and friends and I know you are devoting yourselves to prayer. I invite you in these quiet moments to reflect on God's goodness and generosity to you and how you may continue to share that with others. On this Sunday, we, are, we receive our regular Sunday offering. It is also the fifth Sunday. 
And on this Sunday, our mission committee had designated the offering to be used for the community care clinic. The community care clinic is no stranger to us. It has long been a part of the regular mission giving of this congregation. The community care clinic provides health care to adults in Stanley County who are uninsured. So I invite you as you mail your donations to the church or as you make some other electronic giving to, remind, to be reminded that we will also receive an offering on this Sunday for the community care clinic. Freely we have received and freely we give. Let us pray. God of grace, your glory is revealed in the abundant gifts of your Son, a gift beyond price. Make us generous with our neighbors near and far, even as you multiply our gifts beyond our reach. Give us grace to join your joyful feast and to serve faithfully in the places where you have called us to be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I invite you to stand wherever you are for the benediction. And my charge to you is this. Be intentional. Yes, be intentional about how you use your money and your possessions. But also be intentional about how you care for yourself. Be intentional about how you care for your neighbor. neighbor. Be intentional about following God. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us and all people now and forever. Amen. <laughs>